News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali on TV One. And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live. And my guest this evening is uh, Mr. Pasan Wadana, who is a uh, economic research analyst at the uh, award-winning Advocata Institute, amongst some other jobs he has. Uh, very good evening to you, Pasan, and welcome to the program. Welcome. Thank you. And tell me, you are, you also at something else, uh, the CFPA. What does the CFPA do? Yeah, so uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry, good evening, uh, Mr. Faraz. And CFP is a kind of a newly established organization. It's a kind of NGO. Okay. And uh, I would like to say it's a youth-run uh, youth run or youth led brain hub okay right. so there are 10 areas basically the 10 policy areas yeah. and youth people the brain uh, 10 youth brains are collaborated together and addressing policy issues in these 10 areas you from youth mindset for, uh, from a youth perspective yeah youth perspective okay. what um, we wanted to ask you and we can ask you this are the youth concerned that the prices you know the the, the rupee is strengthening um, against the other currencies, but the prices aren't coming down. Are your youth, are they concerned about that? Yes, of course. Not only youth, I think. Everybody is uh, aware about these rupee appreciation and they are concerning about the prices and everything. Yeah. But the problem is uh, the people, as you mentioned earlier, the people are arguing that, yes, rupee is appreciating what's happening to this price. Prices are not going down, no. So actually, the one I, I want to explain it in uh, two dimensions. Mm -hmm. The one is, Mr. Faraz, there is a natural reason or natural phenomenon. Yeah. The other one is an artificial phenomenon. Right. The natural phenomenon is, now, economic theories are itself mentioning that yeah. always the speed of the rupee appreciation is always a greater value compared yeah. to the speed of the uh, price reduction. That yeah. means always price reduction will take some time after the rupee appreciation according to the basic economic theories. Mm. Now, for an example, okay, let's say Mr. Faraz, you are doing a kind of a shoe manufacturing company. Mm. 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 But when you are doing shoe manufacturing company, you are not following this JIT mechanism, not JIT being just in uh, time mechanism. That means if you want to produce a shoe today, you ha you can uh, purchase raw materials today or yesterday, right? right. You so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So such things are not a plan to do or plan, such things are not happening inside the shoe factories or any other factories. So, if we want to produce shoes today, then we have to take raw materials or we have to purchase raw materials at least three months earlier or one month earlier or maximum two months earlier as well, right? The thing is, suppose you, have, you are going to produce shoes today, you have purchased raw materials three months ago in the last quarter, then in the last quarter, dollar rate was 360 rupee value in terms, uh, sorry, dollar value in terms of rupees, it was 360, but now it is 290. That means 70 rupee reduction is there. Yeah. People argue in that, why these sellers can't give this benefit for the customers? Correct. Because why? And why is that? Then? Yeah. So now see, in last three months, we have imported leather to do this production of the shoes at 360. So, so can we, yeah, can we give that a benefit today itself? No. Mm. So definitely it will consume some time to give the benefit for the customer. So that's good. So uh, the public asks in the question, when are the prices likely to come down? When? Yeah, exactly. I know I can't. you can't say it exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But when will it start gradually to happen? Yeah, it will happen with uh, months and months, uh, within next uh, one or two months, this benefit can be taken to the customers. But the problem is, when this is passing to the customer, sometimes dollar rate can stay at 280 or 275 as well, mm. right? At that time, again, people will ask, okay, prices have gone down, but this is not sufficient. People can say like that. Mm. So that is also because uh, there will be a, some time consumption to pass this uh, benefit to the customer, okay. right? So it can't be done overnight. Overnight, yes, of course. The basic theory is the speed of rupee appreciation is always greater than the speed of the price reduction. Right. That's, that's kind of understood. But here comes, here comes the uh, joker in the pack. Mm. The IMF have given us a certain targets of revenue that we, the government, must uh, achieve. So clearly, if the prices drop, 
the consequent taxes that uh, the retailers and you know the businessmen pay the government will be less so then we will fail what the IMF want us to do how do you how do you, how do you balance the books yeah of course mr faraz now when talking about this inflation and imf targets imf has asked us to reduce the inflation to single digit number that mm. been 4% to 6% value by the end of 2024 yeah but if we uh, read if we have read that uh, june 1st monetary review report issued by the central bank mm. it clearly mentioned that we are performing well in terms of the inflation reduction that what we have already expected right so imf has given a target for us to achieve single digit inflation by the year of 2024 but Yes, of course, central bank is predicting that they can achieve that particular target single digit number of inflation by this year end. So they have already nicely presented a nice article which is showing how inflation has fluctuated in the last uh, few months and last few years. Mm. So it says that yes, the curve started from the top and it was showing a slight decline. Now, I can remember in 2022, Mr. Faraz, uh, September inflation was reported as 70%, which is a quite yeah. big number, double digit number. Even before 1990s, we had such uh, double digit numbers. Even in 1990s, uh, that decade, we also we had uh, double digit numbers. But yeah. this is the first time in recent history that we have seen this kind of double digit numbers. But however, 70% reduced up to 50%. Then it reduced up to now, currently the inflation rate is, according to CCPI, around 30%. So they are predicting that, the central bank is predicting that they can reduce this up to 4% to 6% range by the end of this year. Mm. So I think mm. uh, this will be possible. Yeah. But Mr. Faraz, I forget to mention the artificial reason for this uh, absence of price reduction scenario. Yeah. Right. Uh, the artificial reason is I can remember we have done a small mini research to explore how the sellers are perceiving on these prices and everything. Mm. I met a one seller. I'm not mentioning the type of the good that this particular seller is selling. Yeah. Right. However, he <clears throat> said that we people that mean his own industry, we people are billionaires now. I ask why. Right. He said that. Uh, Okay, previously with the uh, rupee depreciation and everything, cost has gone up. Because of that, they have increased the prices up to certain level. Now, rupee has already appreciated. Cost of the production has gone down. But uh, still, they are not ready to change the prices because they are profit motive people. They want to enlarge the profit. So, they are taking kind of a misusers yeah. from this kind of a crisis situation as well. There are a few such sellers, not all, but few such sellers. So, that is an artificial reason <coughs> why the prices are still at a low level. So, what, what about the, uh, sorry, what about the Consumer Affairs Authority then? What, what, uh, what kind of role can they play? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mr. Faraz, government or these consumer authorities can intervene to the market and impact on it. Yeah. Sometimes they will be punished to two, three uh, shopkeepers uh, and they will be arrested, but it will not be a good solution in terms of price reduction. So in this instance, according to my perception, Mr. Faraz, intervention of the government in a legal manner is not a good thing to do. Right. Okay, we can do it, but it will be not much productive but uh, rather than it is better to create kind of an ethical uh, threat on the sellers right for an example if sellers are selling the products at higher prices then uh, government can take decision to import at low price then obviously okay with the short term of time period short term uh, with the short term uh, even local sellers will tend to reduce the prices to the imported price level right it will be a short term solution that is a way to threat these sellers in an ethical way. And uh, what, in, from your personal experience and when you examine uh, previous history and so on, do you think the Consumer Affairs Authority has the nerve and the commitment to do this? Yeah, it should be uh, done from the top of the organization. Top of the organization means the organization is country and top of the organization is the government. Mm -hmm. And ministers have to decide whether to import or not, right? 
So, then it should down a scale to the consumer authorities and everything, but however the advisors should give proper advisors at the moment, but mm. however it was happened earlier as well, when egg prices are going for the 6 to 5 prices, mm. then government has decided to import and control that uh, competition. And so, by importing products, what will happen? We can expand the competition in the market. Mm. Automatically, local sellers have to sell the product at the real price. Talking about imports, uh, the government continue to have various controls on importation uh, and the automobile industry, for example, is uh, virtually non-existent. Uh, uh, even spare parts are difficult to obtain and uh, I know because I've been waiting one, for one part for more than six months. Um, at what point do you think the government will love or reopen the import restrictions? Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Faraz, according to IMF report, one of the requests what they have made is lifting these import restrictions and opening platform for the free market, free trade with the international sector. Right, of course we can do it, but the thing is, when we are opening our trade to the open world and yeah. when we are removing these restrictions definitely it will create an extra demand for the dollars in future right now actually this uh, rupee appreciation happen basically because of two reasons mr faraz mm. one is dollar uh, appreciate sorry one is a reduction of the dollar demand the other one is increase in the dollar supply yeah right now when we take the dollar demand what are the reasons why dollar demand has gone down because we are not paying loans. Yeah. According to the chart number six in the IMF report, it is yeah. clearly mentioned in that uh, we haven't paid 2.8 dollar billions of the loans, the foreign sector, uh, after the announcement of uh, this temporary stoppage of the loan repayments. That was in uh, on the 12th of April 2020. Yeah, to March of uh, 2023. Yeah. Right. And in addition to that 2.8 dollar billions, we haven't paid 1.2 billions of US dollars uh, which were liable to pay for uh, sovereign bonds on April 18th. Yeah. So altogether, the non-paid loans or unpaid loans can be cited as around uh, 4 dollar billions. So with that, dollar demand has gone down. Uh, you mean 4 billion is the outstanding repayments? Yeah, Not the value. within this period, yeah. uh, within okay. this period, right? And uh, within this period, unpaid loan amount is that one. In addition to that, we have to pay the normal loans, uh, right? Other one is, uh, as you mentioned, we have restricted imports. Then again, demand for the dollars because have gone customs down. Customs revenue will be down because of because no, there's nothing to tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Import duty on what? There's nothing coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, however, import duty tax will be coming as a, a third or fourth uh, tax revenue source in Sri Lankan context, okay. uh, right? But also, can I just stop yeah. for one second there? Um, co corporate taxes, this is a shrinking economy. Uh, companies will, are, make, are struggling. I mean, I had a call from somebody uh, who told me that their sales are down by 50%. And that's astounding. It's a very, very big company. Uh, but so therefore, their, their uh, contribution in terms of income tax will also be affected. Yeah. So where, where these are, it seems to be all very uh, complex. Yeah, it became complex because of the wrong decisions at the beginning. No, yeah. right. If doctor has given a wrong treatment for a patient. Yeah. To re to give a rebirth for that person, definitely we have to give kind of a high pressure vaccine. Right. So that was the thing what has happened, right? right. As I mentioned earlier in 2022, okay. Uh, there were lots of economic stre uh, stressors mm. and the government as well as central bank has taken too much of actions to uh, stop this burden or to reduce this burden. That's why they have tightened the monetary policy and increased the interest rates that mm. also attack people. And that's why the parliament and government has decided to increase the tax rates and all these things and tighten the fiscal policy. In 2022, we have given a high pressure vaccine, mm. right? But 
okay that works mr faraz right that's why june 1st report is clearly mentioned in that sri lanka will come back to the normal situation by the latter part of 2023 mm. they are saying that uh, okay they can relax these uh, interest rates and uh, relax this monetary policy they can relax this fiscal policy that mean in future we can expect reduction in these tax rates mm -hmm. in future we can expect most probably after 2023 end okay from the beginning of 2024 ev not everything but most of the aspects uh, will come to the uh, come to the uh, normal situation back again now we can see on june 1st central bank has announced and they have reduced to uh, our interest rates that been SDFR and mm. uh, SLFR rates by 2.5 percent each. Yeah. If central bank has reduced it, definitely commercial banks also have to do it. That means again, gradually, some of the concessions are moving to the general public until mm -hmm. that we have to tolerate. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Zero number seven two three hundred three zero five, uh, and here's one. Uh, Prasan, it says here by the year end or so, we have to start paying our foreign loans, etc. Then, will the Sri Lanka rupee still be appreciating or the opposite? If that happen, defi definitely rupee will be depreciated. If that happen, but the thing, uh, yes, but we have to start paying them. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there is a company called BMI in Singapore. They are saying that uh, Sri Lanka should pay these loans by this uh, fourth quarter in this particular year, 2023. Mm. But I don't think, uh, however, they are saying that if we are going to pay uh, our loans by the end of this year, definitely this will surpass even 370 as well, right? But uh, that means uh, dollar rate will surpass 370 as well if you are going for that loan repayments again. That is a one prediction. And there is another company called First Capital Holdings. They are saying that uh, we will be reaching to again 370 or 380 level mm. if we are going to remove these import restrictions in future. Actually, government is planning to remove import restrictions for 100 items this month onwards, right? So, Fitch rating. Mm, they have said that uh, before arrival of uh, IMF, they mentioned that uh, this rate will increase up to 390 level. Those, all these pictures are very big pictures. So people can think that ah, we will be uh, taking a U-turn again back to the situation. But I personally don't think that will happen as it is because predictions can be done by any organization according to their own criteria. Mm. But these criteria can be changed with the global economic uh, fluctuations and the local economic fluctuations mm. as well as with the people's expectations that mean mm. speculation. If, yes, but if we go back to our original question on the program yeah. this evening, which is at what point will the prices come down? Then, if we start repaying uh, our loans at the end of this year and the pressure is being put on the exchange rate and on, on our reserves, basically, then the prices are not going to come down anyway. Yeah, let me to explain. Actually, the two, only two problems are remain at the moment, Mr. Faraz. One is import restrictions. The other one is uh, loan repayments. Okay. But I personally think that government will not take a quick action to repay the loans or central bank will not take uh, actions to repay the loans within this year because still we are in the process of restructuring loans. What we are trying is to extend the loan duration or to take a haircut for the loans. So I don't think that we will go for the loan repayments uh, uh, in big bulks within this year, mm. right? That's one thing. And the second thing is regarding the import restrictions. Yeah. Even though we are going to remove import restrictions, of course, dollar demand will go up and uh, this value can go up. Okay, uh, the dollar value can go up. But I personally believe that this will fluctuate within the range of 2000, sorry, 280 to 320, 280 to 320 for about another three, four months. Mm. But it depends. It depends actually. Now, Mr. Faraz, country is having an excess amount of reserves. Okay, as I mentioned, we haven't uh, paid loans mm. and uh, through the import restrictions, we have saved certain amount of uh, dollars within the country. At the same time, with regard to exports, especially with regard to service exports, we have increased our service exports by 2% in last March. 
as well as that with regard to the foreign worker remittances, we have increased it. When you say we have improved our exports, is that in terms of service quantity? exports? Oh, okay. okay, service exports. There is a kind of a drop down in the merchandise exports, yeah. like that as well as that. Uh, we have received IMF support uh, plus World Bank support as well. Mm. So all together around 6 billion of the cash inflows, dollar inflows were observed in the first quarter of 2023. That means Mr. Faraz this is a good situation. Our dollar demand is very low. Our dollar supply is very high, not very high, but very high, compar comparatively high. So, if we use this excess amount of the dollars and pump to the economy to boost the supply in the economy, then definitely we can increase the dollar supply in future as well. But uh, what about my manufacturer, my industrialist who's telling me that his business is down by 50%? Yeah. What happens to him? That's that's a, that's why I'm suggesting government, I'm proposing government use this excess amount of resource uh, immediately to boost the economy. This is a good by situation. Doing what? Sorry? How will they boost it? Yeah, by providing subsidies, but it shouldn't be a Comp uh, permanent subsidy should be a kind of a temporary subsidy, especially the 70 percentage of the economy is handling by the SMEs. Okay, mm -hmm. kind of tax concessions can be given for those SMEs, uh, especially. Uh, but I'm glad you mentioned it because uh, the um, hospitality, the leisure industry, the hotel industry, mm -hmm. uh, lots of SMEs there, and uh, they have now started getting letters of demand. Uh, because they haven't been able to pay uh, during the lockdown period and you know corona time uh, they only were given the only help they got from the government was this moratorium but it's a moratorium that it just means it's temporary reprieve now that period's finished and these guys are asked being asked to pay and if they don't pay they're being taken to court how will do you envisage a situation where the government will, will be able to afford to write off some of the interest and so on on these SME loans? I think uh, I said kind of answer earlier as well. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, now the situation is getting better. And in June first report, central bank clearly mentioned that they can uh, relax the monetary policy as well as they can relax the fiscal policy after the end of the 2023. Yeah. That mean, Mr. Faraz, interest rates will further go down. Now, interest rates have gone down by 2.5 percentage. That mean our uh, SMEs uh, can borrow loans at comparatively at a low interest rate. So they can boost their economy or they can boost their financial status and business activities by borrowing loans. This is a good time. Okay, interest rates have gone down. As well as that, in future, we can expect uh, with the uh, recovery, after looking at the recovery, government can take uh, steps to reduce these uh, interest, sorry, reduce these taxes and everything. Now, another tax is going to be arrived, uh, uh, Mr. Faraz. If you have read, read uh, this uh, particular IMF report, they mentioned that they are Sri Lanka should introduce property tax by the year 2025. And what does that mean? Yeah, it will be an extra burden because on the value of the property, mm -hmm. government, uh, sorry, the owners and everybody have to pay a certain kind of a tax. So, what, on a regular basis? Not regular basis, but uh, twice a year or once a year, once so what a about year, the something like taxes? that. Sorry? What about the rates and taxes? Yeah, that is a separate tax and this will be a new tax. It will be an island-wide tax. So this is not available in Sri Lanka at the moment. But even in India, Belgium, those countries are practicing this. So actually, IMF is not mentioning how should we operate this tax. It's mm. up to you, mm. right? Uh, what is the frequency of charging this tax? Uh, on whom are we going to charge the tax? Uh, like that, those things have to be decided by the government. So when charging that property tax, uh, I think government should give exceptions on SMEs who are trying to build the 70% of this economy. That's why I'm saying that uh, relaxing fiscal policy should be happened at the end of the 2023 or at the end of a uh, beginning of 2024. But that's uh, absolutely astonishing, uh, a property tax on top of everything else. Um, I mean, people probably won't, they, they won't have um, uh, elections now because if you impose this property tax, you can bet your bottom dollar that you're going to lose the election <laughs> because uh, 
Does it worry you as an economic research person? Does it worry you that we have not had elections? Personally, mm. I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm asking you, citizen person, mm. citizen of Sri Lanka. Are you worried? Uh, I think because uh, this is my personal idea. Of course, not, it's yeah. nothing to do with uh, <laughs> yeah. your organization. Not the personal, uh, not the political view of advocate or anywhere. No, no. This is personal and I personal idea. I personally believe that economy should recover first before the election. Right, mm. because a change in the politicians is not the solution at the moment, but changing the policies is the major thing that should be happened. That's why we have established the CFPA, Ceylon Foundation for Policy Analysis. Youth people are struggling, youth people are shouting, but some of the facts are not available in those policies. Mm. So I think uh, the brains should collect together and uh, raise a voice in a in a in a in a decent way. So that's why we believe that policies needed to be changed, not the politicians. Let's see. Um, that's interesting. Um, here is lots, lots more questions. Um, now then, what about, you know, with the exchange rate uh, uh, coming down, if you like, the, the dollar exchange rate, so the rupee appreciating, what do you think will happen to the foreign remittances that are coming from our expatriate brothers and sisters working working abroad will we experience another slowdown in in uh, the the amount of money that's being sent back yeah probably it can be happen because the value of uh, uh, value of dollar is uh, moving down because of that uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is a possibility for such thing to be happen mm. uh, however however mr faraz uh, i think now the dollar is appreciate sorry rupee is appreciated no but the speed of this appreciation is too much as i personally perceive in mm. right for an example now few uh, few uh, weeks ago it was around 320 now it is uh, uh, 290 it's very fast I think in such kind of a situation, the central bank intervention needed to be happen here. So actually, the overflow in is also not good to be happen, mm. right? Over appreciation is also not good, uh, as well as that over uh, depreciation is also not a good thing. And if it is happening in a very fast way, it should be controlled by the government, as I feel. At one time, government intervened to the foreign exchange market, and they have purchased the excess amount of dollars in the market, and they have controlled it up to certain extent mm -hmm. so at this time also since it is fluctuating in a kind of a speedy manner it's better if central bank can intervene to the market and purchase the excess dollar supply and settle down this one otherwise uh, as you mentioned it might affect uh, badly for the speculations of the foreign workers as well as that it might badly for the exporters who are generating who are bringing dollars for the country well uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Pasan, to uh, uh, having spoken to us today. Um, what's your prediction based on your research? Do you think the uh, the dollar um, will go up to beyond three hundred again? Yeah, it can fluctuate uh, in between two eighty and three twenty. Uh, what about a return to three hundred and fifty plus? I personally don't think. Pasan Vijay Wadana, thank you very much for being on Newsline Live. That's the way it was. Take care. Have a great evening, as best as you can, of course. And uh, it's now time for the primetime news. But God bless you all.